All right, Mr. Loudon, thank you very much for joining us. Really appreciate, uh, appreciate the time. Uh, first question, <laughs> uh, you see the world changing. Uh, you've written a number of books on it. Most recent one, obviously, about the 2020 election and uh, the White House Reds. Tell us about communism and what the great threat is here in the West from it. Well, you have a, um, you know, back in the old Soviet days, the West was largely on guard against communism. We could see tanks, we could see big military parades. The Russians were invading countries, subjugating countries, persecuting people. But after the Soviet Union faded away, where our, our attention pretty much went off communism, and we set about building China into a world superpower. We gutted American industry and sent it to China because Kissinger and Nixon told us that they would become our friends. They would democratize. They would become like us. Well, it's worked in exactly the opposite direction. Now the Chinese have a huge military. They have a military alliance with Russia. Um, they are working with Cuba and Venezuela and Nicaragua and South Africa. And they have basically got to the point where the balance of power is almost in their favor, meaning that the Chinese, Chinese Communist Party is almost on the verge of becoming the dominant force in the world. Now, when we had with President Trump, he was keeping them under control. But it, with under President Joe Biden, he is their friend. You know, they, they basically have huge, massive influence in the United States now um, in our in our education system, in our government. So the opposition to world communism, when it's at its most powerful, has just lost its champion. So we're in a, a hugely perilous state right now. What do you think the uh, appeal is? Because it's your assertion, and many, many people would agree with it. It's your assertion that the, uh, a lot of this has been done through cooperation with various, I guess you'd put air quotes around Americans, American political leaders. Why would they be doing that? It seems almost counterintuitive. Americans should be promoting America uh, and not taking taxpayer dollars by the trillions and giving it to other countries that are essentially at least our adversaries, if not up and up enemies. Well, we know that before World War Two, <coughs> before World War Two, a lot of American corporations made a lot of money trading with the Nazis. You know, so so they just looked at business deals. They looked at expanding their influence. They were happy to work with IG Farben and all these big German companies. It wasn't their sons and daughters that were going to get shot at when the Nazis went on the rampage. So in the last few decades, we've had a lot of American businessmen making a lot of money with China. We've had Wall Street loves China. Big tech loves China. They make lots of money with China. They admire the Chinese model, the authoritarian Chinese model. So they actually prefer China to the United States. So they have been happy to gut America's industry weaken America's defenses. Um, our politicians have been happy to sell their souls to China for Chinese money, or in some cases because they actually ideologically support China. You know, J John Ratcliffe, uh, Trump's defense uh, chief, said publicly the other day that the Chinese have blackmailed or influenced so many US Congress members now, they can determine which legislation goes through the U.S. Congress and which doesn't. That should terrify every American, every Westerner. It was on the news for a couple of hours, then it disappeared. Mm -hmm. Again, is it, is it just a sellout for money on the part of whatever compromised, uh, it's probably a fair word, compromised American politicians there are? Is it just money or you mentioned some ideologically are uh, married to the CCP? Yeah, well, it tends to be in the Democratic Party, it tends to be a bit more ideological. You know, you've got many people in the Democratic Party with communist backgrounds. People like Dianne Feinstein, Senator Dianne Feinstein, um, Judy Chu, the Congresswoman from, Ala from California. 
um, some of them, people like Adam Schiff, the head of the Intelligence Committee, uh, is very in with a group called the Committee of 100, a major Chinese propaganda operation in this country. So the Democrats, it tends to be ideology and some money. The Republicans, it tends to be money. They just love the big deals. They love the trips to China. They love, you know, Mitch McConnell, you know, the head of the Republican Senate, um, his wife, her family has made millions of dollars trading with the communist Chinese. So it's, it's ideology on the left plus money. On the right, it's money. Do you think that there is a threat uh, here in America and other Western nations, but predominantly America, do you think there is a threat to people who are uh, believers, religious minded, uh, morally conservative, you know, stemming from their religious values uh, and even politically conservative, but specifically uh, people who would identify as religious? Is all of this going to come down somehow on them directly? Yeah, look, absolutely. The, the Democrats are prepare, preparing for religious persecution in this country. Now, you, you look at it from their point of view. The left controls Hollywood. The left controls the unions. The left controls the media. The left controls education. And the only thing the left doesn't control are the conservative religious denominations. These are the crazy, fanatical people who voted Ronald Reagan into power. These are the crazy people who voted Donald Trump into power. So that cannot be allowed to stand. So the, the, already the Democrats have, um, are, are coming out with all sorts of policy positions to basically eliminate traditional Christianity in this country. And I don't say that lightly. I don't, when I say eliminate, I don't mean, you know, mildly persecute. I mean eliminate you know, using every agency of the state to drive what we would call traditional Christianity, whether Protestant or Catholic, Catholic, underground. Because traditional Christians are the biggest enemy of the communists and socialists. And they're not going to be allowed to get in the way of this great new world order. So they are, they are going to be persecuted. It's uh, unless we make a very strong stand against that. But that is certainly the plan. So how do you see this unfolding? How do you envision uh, all of this coming to fruition? Is it going to be, you know, and I'm certainly not making light of it, is it put on the yellow stars and you can't have a job and all of that? Or is this just going to be, uh, you know, because little many traditional, uh, you know, conservative uh, Catholics certainly and Protestants uh, you know, they have some positions of power. They're sitting on some. Some of them are, are members of board of directors of various things. So it's not like it's this great already under, you know, uh, uh, persecuted underclass. Uh, some people are, you know, relatively famous and they have some uh, some traction around the country and that sort of thing. So is are you to foresee laws being passed forbidding you from being Christian or, you know, how do, how do you see it unfolding? Uh, and I guess part of what's going through my head is the a comparison to uh, the Reichstag laws uh, back in the 30s yeah. in Nazi Germany. Well, you, you look right now, you know, the, the, the Catholic Church in, in China has basically been turned over to the Chinese Communist Party as, as the authority over it. So in America, what you're going to see is laws. They're going to use the LGBTQ agenda. They've already passed the Equality Act to the Democrat Congress. That that basically puts uh, left-wing homosexual rights ahead of your religious liberties. There'll be no religious exemptions against this kind of thing. So say you're a, a conservative uh, priest or you're a conservative pastor and a homosexual couple comes to your church and say, we want to get married in your lovely church. And you say, well, that does not accord with our religious values. You'll need to go elsewhere. Well, you'll get hit with a $5 million dollar civil rights lawsuit from the Justice Department. You'll be shut down and they don't have to do it to every church to do that. They're already taking away, uh, proposing to take away religious exemptions for vaccinations. There's going to be, uh, you know, religious, r r the Bible basically is now being t treated as a hate text, you know, so there's going to be hate speech laws will be used against any pastor or priest 
who, who preaches on traditional values, you know, on, on traditional, um, you know, traditional gender roles, you know, male and female, um, you know, traditional views of marriage, etc. And, you know, the Old Testament will be, is basically regarded as a, as a hate document, you know, things like the, the Ten Commandments are, uh, are outdated. So there will be legislative pressure, plus there will be social pressure, you know, um, religious companies will be persecuted. Um, they, if they don't conform to the new way, they will be basically um, forced out of business. So there'll, there'll be all of the above to, to crush what we know now as traditional Christianity. If you want to be a social justice Christian, if you want to be a critical race theory Christian and buy into Black Lives Matter and distribution of wealth, you'll survive a bit longer. You'll, you'll be around a bit longer, but you won't be actually Christian. You'll just have a cross over your building and pretend to be Christian. So in, w within uh, more orthodox or traditional Catholic circles, there have been for many years now, and of course Church Milton has reported on a lot of this, uh, a kind of caving in to uh, the liberal social justice warrior participation in, in fact by the American uh, U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops. Do you see them after all of these years, I mean, they've been nicknamed the Democratic Party at prayer and Democrats in robes and all that sort of thing. And this stuff stretches back to the 70s. Do you see them sort of putting a stake in the ground all of a sudden saying this far and no farther? Or do you see them just sort of capitulating to all of this like part of the church did in China? Look, I, I would say that I say most of them will capitulate. You know, where have the bishops and, art and the cardinals been you know, when abortion has become the law of the land, where where gay rights have become the law of the land, where all of these things, where where nuns are forced to fund abortion and things like this. I've seen very little movement from most of the cardinals or bishops in this country. Yes, there are a few good ones, but the brave ones or the traditional ones are in a minority. Most of them would really support the Pope Francis agenda, which is pretty left, to put it mildly. <laughs> so, so, you know, I, I can see, I, I don't know what's going to happen with the Catholic Church. Already a lot of the Protestant churches are splitting. A lot of people are breaking away from the traditional de denominations. And um, I don't know what's going to happen in the Catholic Church, but there is a, a civil war in there right now, and unfortunately the left is winning. So what do people do? Do they... You know, do they do they just suck it up for the sake of unity, or do they do, do they have a schism? I, I don't know what's going to happen, but it is a very serious issue, that's for sure. Do you foresee something? As you mentioned, you know, legislative and social pressure and all that sort of thing. Do you do you foresee something like a uh, uh, I don't know, like a concentration camp kind of system? So I mean, because if you just pass a bunch of uh, laws that sort of touch people civilly but they're still in the culture, you know, they're going to the grocery store and talking to their friends and, you know, convince them. It seems to me if you're going to uh, take the Marxist approach of, you know, the, the, uh, the, the strategy of, you know, the South will never rise again, you can't leave people in the culture. You can't leave people who are espousing traditional Catholic or, you know, uh, uh, other such views, you can't leave them hanging around. You've got to get them out of, from among the general population. So do you see a camp system set up where all of these people are concentrated? Well, this is, you know, this people, people, um, if I'd said this 10 years ago in America, people would say I was crazy. Yeah. But ultimately, yes, that would happen. But, you know, this, this unfolding Re American revolution could take a few years to play out. But the leaders of the Democratic Party now, just as far left as the leaders of Cuba or China or Russia, you know, the Soviet Union, they are just as communist. So, and America has a very strong conservative tradition. You know, the Second Amendment, the First Amendment, very strong cat traditional Catholic, a Catholic community, very strong evangelical and Baptist communities. These people do not want to roll over for the new socialism, and they're going to protest that. So there, there will have to be a repression. There will have to be people going to jail. There will have to be people put out of business. And ultimately, yes, 
ultimately that would devolve into a concentration camp system, e even executions. We shouldn't think that America is going to be different from any other communist revolution. This is what's happened every other time around the world. And the only reason often it wasn't even more extreme is because it could, people could flee to America and people in America would put pressure on these, on these countries to ease their horrible civil, um, you know, repression. Well, if America is under communist rule, where do you go from there? You know, th there's no one to hold these people to account. There's nobody to stand up to them. They can be just as brutal as they want to be. And a revolution gets a momentum of its own. You know, once it's going and people are informing on each other, everybody's watching their back. The Everybody in the whole system is under pressure. And the only way you can keep yourself free is by turning in, uh, turning other people into the state, by um, betraying your, your brothers, by betraying your family. And that's how communism devours its own. It becomes a self perpetuate machine of destruction. So yes, I'm sure a lot of the Democrat congressmen don't would be horrified by the idea of concentration camps, but that is the inevitable outcome of their current policy direction. So standing here in early 2021, what are the uh, eventual occupants of a concentration camp system supposed to do now? Well, this, this is what, I, what I'm thinking. And I've been thinking a lot about this. I'm getting a lot of questions. What we have in this country now is the, the Marxists basically have control of all three branches of government. The executive, judiciary, legislature, the Supreme Court, the whole lot. It's, it's in the hands of the left. And the Supreme Court is about to be stacked. They'll have another four justices. All will be communists. And so what have we got? We've got a few Republicans, a few, a handful, and we've got a mass base who loves Donald Trump. And we've got a big base of con conservative Catholics and, and uh, Baptists and evangelicals. What has to happen is a new movement has to arrive, arise. We have to form a, a country within a country. All the, 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 there has to be a new movement independent of the GOP that can uh, run for office, get people into elected uh, positions, but also where we network in our, with our businesses together. We only support each other's businesses. We, we boycott the enemy's businesses where we have our own communications networks, you know, the gabs, the parlors, the miwis. Um, we, we have our own communities. So we have a, a, a patriotic nation within a nation that unites those 60, 70, 80, 90 million people who supported Trump and voted to, to restore this republic. If we can get that movement going quickly and start priming out, uh, you know, gutless GOP people um, taking Democrat seats at county commission, uh, school board, state rep positions and move right on up, we can actually, I think this is our last hope, we can actually take the country back. But we have to get ourselves in order. We have to patch up all our silly family squabbles. We have to sort ourselves out spiritually. We have to steel ourselves for what is coming. And we have to be prepared to unify with people we might not normally work with, but who love the country and support the Constitution. That is the, the way forward that I see. And that is already starting to um, gather steam right now. In a, uh, uh, I'll ask you one last question then as far as a, uh, I don't know if you're a betting man or not, but if you were, or if you are, uh, what odds would you give that movement at succeeding, at least if we were to find su success, at least as uh, not being hauled off to camps and being allowed to live somewhat peacefully while we're still in opposition uh, to a Marxist regime? Well, if, that, if that's the standard, I think that movement could be would have an 80% chance of success. 
My standard is to actually take this country back and restore the constitutional republic and fully restore religious liberty and internationally go on the march to, to bring the, the Chinese Communist Party to its knees. That bar, I would give about 20%, 25%. Look, yeah, I, I, no, maybe, no, I think probably higher than that. I think it's got a very good chance of success because sometimes you have to almost lose what you've got before you appreciate it and are willing to stand up. While we're in that position now, all our illusions are being shattered, all our faith in the GOP has been shattered, our faith in the Supreme Court has been shattered, we've got to turn to our religious faith now and we've got to turn to each other and the foundations of this country. And if we do that, I think we've got an even chance of surviving for a long time and a slightly less than even chance of actually taking this country back. Excellent. Trevor Loudon, thank you very much for your tremendous insights. Tell everybody about your book very quickly. The easiest question you'll get your whole life. Yeah, yeah. White House Reds, you can get it on Amazon. No, don't go to Amazon. I just told you not to deal with the enemy. Don't <laughs> deal with Amazon. Go directly to my website, trevorloudon.com, White House Reds. It profiles the communist background of Biden and Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar, the people who ran for Congress. And there you'll also get my great movie, Enemies Within. It had three million views on Amazon Prime, so I took it down just before the election. That movie will even convert hardcore Democrats. It'll turn them into patriots. So you get that movie and get my book off the website, trevorloudon.com, and you'll be well armed. You'll understand what's unfolding in this country. Awesome. Mr. Loudon, thank you so much for your insights and uh, your time here with this interview. God bless you. Thank you. Well, well thank you for doing what you, you guys are doing. It's, you're a real blessing to this country. Thank you. It's very, very, very kind words. Thank you very much. God bless. Yeah, God bless you. Thank you.